So hello everybody, here I have a Fader Fox EC4, which is the device people ask me about over the last years. It's not new on the market, it's there for quite some time, but finally I have one in my hands and we can also have a look at it and I could do the support for Bitwig as well as Reaper and at the end of the video we are also having a look at Reaper. People always ask me to also do videos about the Reaper support and I normally do not do that because it's totally identical to Bitwig. So watch my Bitwig videos and then just read up in the manual of Driven by Moss what are the differences to Reaper. But nevertheless at the end of the video we will also have a short look how it looks and feels with Reaper as well. So looking at the device, the device is very lightweight since it's fully plastic and uh, it only has three connections, so you can use it via USB MIDI, or you have also the plugs I do not like, but nevertheless a MIDI input and a MIDI output port. So you need an adapter for that if you want to go to regular five pin MIDI plugs. It's plastic, but it feels very solid. Also no wobbling on the knobs or anything like that. And it has a nice display as we also will see in a second. Like the Electro One, for example, its original intention is to control hardware devices. But nevertheless, now there is firmware 2.0 was just released yesterday. So I could now nicely support it with Bitwig and Reaper and we will have a look at that. So let's fire it up. We just need to plug in the USB connector and here it is. So the basic concept is you have 16 knobs but there are also buttons so you can also press them and yeah sure you can turn them so they are endless rotary encoders and you have three views in a display. You can have a name, which is a bit of a limitation. The display is quite large, but nevertheless, to cram up information about 16 knobs, you have only four characters. So that's a bit of a limitation, but nevertheless, you will see I made a bit of a twist with the door integration. So we will see more information than only the four characters. But nevertheless, if you want to control hardware devices for that and not use it with a door, you are limited to these four characters. And then you have another few where we'll see bars. Yeah, you can see if you increase the values, you will have some kind of bar representation to see what is the value. And we can also have a numeric display of it. Nevertheless, you always have to change between those three. So first thing to look at uh, how we can update it to firmware 2. So you need to run in Chrome, the editor. So if we go to the website of FaderFox, so the good old FaderFox homepage just got updated to firmware 2. And there you also see there is now a new editor for version 2. And let's start up that. You normally also need to allow here that Chrome can access the MIDI port, but I already did that. So we have now here the FaderFox EC4. And there is also an option to upgrade to firmware 2, which I will also do since I'm not sure if I'm running a better version or not, or if it's really the final release. So what do we need to do? Disconnect the EC4 from the USB connection, press the red shift. Okay, so let's do that. Keep shift press, put it in again. So we'll see this is already version two. Nevertheless, let's make sure it's really the final release. So should read the yes, it does. Press the button, send update to EC4 below. So let's do that. And it's doing the update process. So, and we are ready to go. And what I did not mention so far, this one has 16 so-called setups, which you can select by pressing the knob, the respective knob, and each setup has then 16 groups, which basically means you can have 16 different button and knob configurations inside such a setup, and you have 16 setups. And we need to have now one specific for Driven by Moss, and that is part of the download. It seems via the editor you can only send and receive the full setup. So you do not have to override everything and only the one setup we need for Driven by Moss. You cannot use here the editor for that, but you can use your preferred MIDI SysX tool. For example, here I still use MIDI aux on Windows and there you can go to the SysX dialog and there you can select, where is it, send SysX file 
we first need to select here the fader fox output use the fader fox output and then we can say send sysx file let's go to function and setup here choose receive and then it's waiting and now we can select and now we can go to the resources folder which is part of the download of driven by master there can you can select the fader fox folder and there is a file and you can send this one to the device and this seems to have worked nicely let's check it out so i think it always receives it on one so I think it receives it on one. I need to check back with that. But nevertheless, with the editor, you could also receive now everything and then put it on another slot. So we have it now in there. So let's fire up Bitwig. So in Bitwig, we go to the settings, controllers, and there is already the FaderFox EC4. It got detected automatically and you can simply click here on adding it. And there it is in all its beauty. Maybe let's also already have a look at all the settings you can have there. First thing, which is the important one, is you need to select in which setup slot. So from these 16, you did put the template for Bitwig. And here I chose the first, but you can put it on each and every one here in the list. And then you have different settings, for example, on the play pause, what happens, we want to have pause, stop or return to zero. And there are some user functions you can configure. These are accessible via the function button. So if you click here on the function button, keep it pressed, you see you have four user functions, which can then be executed with these four buttons. So by pushing these while holding down the function knob, and these can be selected here from this large list where you have all the different Bitwig settings and can choose different, yeah, yeah, you have all the options under redo or whatever you want to execute via these four functions. Sadly, you cannot rename them, so we are stuck with user one, two, three, four, and so you need to remember that. And there are some workflow options here. So if, for example, you can exclude the activated tracks or sends from the few also devices, which makes sense to activate or to declutter here your few. And you can have for new clips, the lengths, and you can also configure the knob sensitivity. So how fast the value changes if you turn the knob and the lower the value, the slower is the knob. And if you combine it with shift, you can also make the value change in a slower way and this can be configured here separately. So let's finally look at what it can do but maybe let's load a project which makes a bit of a sound. So what can we do now with the device? There are several modes but I decided to not use the setup or group pages because it take quite a bit of button pressing to change them. For example, if we go to the group, you need to first go to group, then you would need to change the group and then you have the different function or same with a setup, you need to switch setup. And um, yeah, so I decided only to have one setup and one group which you need to make sure is selected to work with Bitwig or Reaper. The good thing about it is it goes offline if you switch to a different mode, which you can also see if you go here to the scripting console, you see it's going online or offline. So for example, let's go to the second group and then it goes offline, which means if it's offline, you can use all the other groups and setups for controlling different things in Bitwig. For example, you could route it to a hardware device, to an external hardware device, or have a direct mapping. And these are also accessible. For example, if you click here on any of these sounds, you see that there is an EC4, and here you get all the other channels. So the Driven by MOS setup group, that one, is only using MIDI channel 16 and the other 15 can be used in your different setups in case you need them. And you see it went online again because I selected the first one. So there's no need to change setups or groups. You can stay in that mode, but in this one group, you have lots of modes which are accessed much simpler. So let's explain how this works. So in all modes, the lower four knobs and buttons always do the same things. They are for transport control as well as changing mode. And the upper 12 knobs 
do what the specific mode is supposed to do. So let's start. First mode is the track mode, which means you control the actual currently selected track. For example, let's have that track here. There you can control the volume, you can control the panorama, you can control the mute state by turning it as well, turning it to the left, unmute it, and same here for solo. And then we have eight cent. So we can, I only have one cent here, so I can only control cent one, but these control then cent two up to cent eight. So quite powerful. And how do you select a different channel? Simply by pressing one of these 12 buttons. So this one selects the second channel, first channel, up to 12 channels. So this is also the intention of the device. It's a very simple device and also the usability should be kept simple for a specific use case. And the specific use case is having control mainly in a live situation to have your basic needs and not to trying to control everything in the door, which nevertheless means also in a studio context, it makes a lot of sense. But as I said, it's not for each and every feature, it's for the main things. For example, having here sense, having a volume, and quickly, very quickly can access your 12 tracks. For example, in a live situation, normally I have about eight tracks or something, so it's very easy to access these eight tracks. And as you notice, when you click the track or change a value, you get this large display. So you can read the full name, also the numbering of a track, also the long name, and then you get also the full parameter name, which is very helpful. And it's a little bit more understandable than this for later ones. Nevertheless, you can still change to bar context, but this is not very helpful, I think, as well as the numbering. And yeah, maybe it's helpful for someone, for example, for checking if there is a cent selected or not. But I guess this view is a more helpful one. But back to the main four buttons and knobs, which are in every mode. So the first one allows you to change the tempo. And this can also be combined with the shift button. So if you keep that pressed, you can make finer adjustments. So you see, you can also change the fractions of the tempo. And this works also with all the other knobs. So also here you can make finer adjustments while keeping down the shift button. So first one changes tempo, second one changes the crossfader. So in the crossfader, you can then see here's a crossfader and you can select for each channel if it goes to A or B. And then you can fade it with that one. And that one is here, the crossfader. If you keep the shift button pressed and press it, you can also reset it to the center, which is a specific feature here for the crossfader. And then it goes to center position because it's normally not that easy to reach exactly the center position. So this is also a helper function to keep the shift button pressed and click the crossfader. Third one changes the cue volume. So the volume you hear on your headphones normally, which you see here in Bitwig is in that location. And here the volume changes. And this one changes the main volume of your track, which is here. So, but pressing the knobs has also a function. Let's start with that one. That one toggles playback. And if you press it again, it does that function we saw in the settings. If it's pausing or going back to zero, it's up to your choice. Pressing the other three knobs changes mode. So we are here now in a track mode I showed you. And if you press the first one, it changes an additional overlay mode. So then you cannot select any more the tracks, but you can trigger scenes. So this can be changed also in all the other modes. So it's still controlling volume, but if you press it now, it changes the first scene. That one changes to the second scene. Third scene. And so on. This is scene overlay mode and also by pressing it again, you turn the scene mode off. The second one toggles to the device mode, but maybe let's first start with the third one because this toggles to a different track mode. And this track mode now allows to control one parameter for all 12 tracks. So first one 
controls volume. Also, I here do not show the wall information, but directly the value information of the volume. And there you see here in the main output, this controls here still main level. It shows a V at the end for volume. So you see in this sub mode, you see controlling now volume. And this can now change with pressing the 12 knob. So the second one goes to panorama. So you see now a P here. And here you can now change the panorama for all 12 tracks. And as you expect, third one then selects the mute one. You can mute all the 12 tracks. Same fourth one is then solo. So you can solo all of the different tracks. So solo the drums, solo bass, playback stop. And as expected, the other eight buttons select then the different sends. Here you see also clearly who has a send effect active of these 12 tracks. And this goes up here. We only have one send here, but this goes up here to send eight. So this is this track mode. Also here you can activate the scene overlay. So you can now not choose parameters, but you can now trigger scenes. For example, you could leave it here in the volume mode. So you control here the levels of your four tracks or the, your, your solo or muting some tracks if you do kind of DJ techno setup. And then you could activate the overlay for scenes, starting scenes and then muting out different tracks. Let's check out the last mode. So that one switches to device and parameter control. And in that mode, the four knobs do the same as in the normal track mode. So the first knob still control the volume, panorama and mute and solo of the selected track. So let's go back maybe to that one. So here you see it's controlling still the level of that track, panorama, and mute and send. So the middle eight knobs now control parameters and there are three modes. So the first one controls project parameters, the second mode controls the track parameters and the third mode controls the parameters of the selected device. For example, if I select here the phaser device, I can now change the parameters of this phaser device. And if we go in the second mode here, we can change, uh, we don't have any track parameters, I guess here it's empty, but we could add here some track parameters. For example, I would like here to control the output level of hive and I would like to control the bass frequency and I would like to control the frequency of the phasers. So now we can control here the output frequency we can control here the frequency of that one as well as the phaser one. And same works then for the project. So we would also need to configure a project page, but it's basically the same. Yeah, that's about it. What you can do with a fader fox, I think quite powerful for this specific use case and pretty handy because it's very lightweight and fits easily in any bag. And it's great to take on the road and controlling, for example, a more configured live setup. Finally, let's have a look at Reaper. So in Reaper, it works quite the same. We need to detect it. It's already here configured as well. So we can use it also right away. So it does exactly the same. It changes the volume. Maybe it's open up here. The mixer view there, you can see it better. Where is the selected track here? So it's changing the volume. It changes here the panorama muting, sanding, so absolutely identical. Also in the subtracks, we can control all the different volumes here. Playback start, tempo changing. Uh, the only thing is there is no crossfader in Reaper, so crossfading has no effect. But beside that, everything works the same. Also, if we go into the parameter mode, it does also work. So the project parameters view, changes the parameters, the track parameters of the main channel. So I can change here that one, this mixer parameter I configured here. And if we go here to a channel which has track parameters, you can go to track parameter and also control the parameters on the track. And if you go here to the third mode, you can directly control the parameters which are in that device. So pretty identical, works nicely with Bitwig as well as Reaper. 
and I hope you like it, dig it and make some fucking music. <laughs>